Yeah, uh, my name is Doug Berger. I was a uh, boom operator in the U.S. Air Force for 20 years. I flew four years on a KC-97, 16 years on a KC-135, and flew 150 missions in Vietnam. So uh, that's my story. Afterwards, I uh, went back to school and I was a software engineer for Northrop Grumman for 27 years. <laughs> so uh, anyway, now I volunteer three days a week at the museum. And I love it because I can get out here and get dirty and I don't have to deal with computers. <laughs> Although I do do their database, database for... Uh, Can you give me a hand there? Smart because I look like this. So the green tanks held the fuel for the receiver. Okay. And the fuel for this was in the wings. Okay. okay so it's two separate fuel two, 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 two separate fuel, mainly B-47s, probably 80% of the time. Occasionally a B-52, and very rarely a F-84, and I've refueled all three of those. The B-52 has gear down, flaps down, both pilots dragging their feet. So we had to do 500 foot per minute descent, balls to the walls, and they're barely hanging on. Right. So uh, they, originally uh, the Air Force wanted to do Electris, but uh, Boeing made the KC-135. They rolled it out, and Kurt LeMay saw that. And he said, I'm buying these. And actually, the KC-135 was a predecessor to the 707. Yeah. So uh, it's still a beautiful airplane today. And it's my favorite. <laughs> okay. All right. So when you go up the ladder, you're going to get a good whiff of JP-4 and hydraulic fluid. I didn't go on here for 25 years. I got up there. I said, I'm home. Watch your head going up there. Yep. You want me to go up this ladder on the left? Go up there and get in the cockpit. Okay. Let's go up there on the, on the left and get in the pilot seat. Geez, for such a big plane, there's not a lot of room. Well, the seat's way up. Yeah. Okay, this, this is a sexton. And uh, when I flew on this, we went overseas, we flew at night, and we did celestial navigation. And part of my job was uh, using the sexton to get a three-star fix. The navigator did a pre-comp, and then we mounted the sexton up here at the top of the plane. And then I got up, I do shoot three, we call it shooting. I'd shoot three stars, we'd angle, you draw the angle from the stars, and where the three angles meet, that's where you were. I retired in 1982, and the KC-135, we were still doing celestial navigation. Huh. Now they have a GPS, they don't even carry a navigator. So this plane had pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, navigator, and boom operator. And I was a boom operator, I was in the back. Okay? Okay. So the orange thing up there is radar. Okay? Yeah. Because an airplane, you don't want to fly through a thunderstorm. That Malaysian airliner, they'll never find any piece of it. Because uh, I'm sure if you're up in Canada, you've had some pretty fierce thunderstorms. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is, this cool. is all old school. I tell the kids when I flew on this, I wasn't allowed to use a calculator because they didn't have them. <laughs> we actually had a, a load adjuster, a slip stick to do weight and balance, but uh, no calculators. So everything was manual on this guy. All right, let's see if I can get out of here. <laughs> okay, kind of uh, interesting thing here too. Is uh, when you get out of there. <laughs> I know it's a struggle. Right up here, right up there. Okay. At night, if our receiver could find us, we could shoot flares. Okay. Yeah, and it would mean the navigator would fight over who got to shoot the flare. So, then over here is uh, the latrine. Get out of your way. So we we have a urinal.
That's a honey bucket. Okay. Okay, and it's a bucket. So if you're the Just first one to use it, when we land, you got to take it in a hanger and clean it. And if you go first, everybody else has to go. Right. Okay. So, so it becomes a competition to see who right. can hold out the longest. Right. <laughs> and the first guy goes in the hangar with a bucket. <laughs> this is our refueling panel, which it scoots over here, right? Right. But it uh, regulates the fuel flow to the receiver. Okay. Now on a latrine, this is very important. I could lock this door with a dime. And if it was your first mission with us and you went in there, I'd lock the door and we'd ring the bell to bail out. Not a pretty sight. <laughs> <laughs> My wife always said, you guys are grown men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I thought you'd like to get a shot out here. In the bay. So as a boom operator, I sat back here, and part of my job was uh, scanning the engines. So I watched Twilight Zone, and a guy ripped the engine off the plane, and I had to fly the next night, and I called my pilot, I said, I'm afraid to look out the window. He said, look out the window, boomer. <laughs> and I did, yeah. So I'll take this, and you're going to climb down here. Okay, step on a black. Uh, Hold the handle and step on the black. Okay. Three. Then step down on a red and lay on your stomach. Okay. Yep. Now reach straight down with your right hand. No, back toward me. In the hole there. In that dark hole. Yep. Reach down in there. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. You feel the stick? Yep. I feel with the stick. With your left hand, you grab the handle in front of you. Okay, so you lower the boom, if you look at the gauges, you see you got gauges. Mm -hmm. You lower the boom to 30 degrees, you run it out 10 feet, and you're ready to refuel. So you, the boom flies left 10, right 10, and up and down from 20 to 40, and it goes from uh, 6 to 18 feet in and out. Hmm. So you got, you got a pretty big thing. So my big uh, Disneyland joke is, my job in the Air Force was laying on my stomach, passing gas. <laughs> These over here, those are accumulators because the boom's hydraulic. So if you get an automatic disconnect, all that hydraulic fluid's got to go somewhere. Right. So it goes in those accumulators, and then inside the boom is the fuel accumulator. Now we flew in formation. We flew in formation of threes, and we had marker lights. So uh, number one was red, red. Uh, number two is red, white. Number three was uh, red, green. And if one or two moved up, uh, you're number three, you moved up. And I had to crawl back in that hatch. I had to take that hatch out, crawl back there, and change the lenses. Right. There's a beacon back there, and there's a bunch of lenses. And that's how we set our, our uh, position lights for uh, when we're in formation. Gotcha. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to put the hatch in. Okay. And then you're going to put that one in. Okay. Okay, you ready? So you grab it like this, so this don't hit you in the head. Right. Okay? And there's, see these two little things here, right? Okay. And then down here, there's two little hooks. Mm -hmm. So you pick it up like this, so it don't hit you in the head. You stick the bottom in, and you get those two little things in there. Yep. Then you pull the handle out and push it in. Gotcha. Got it? Yep. Good, because you're doing the one up there. Okay. All right. I love these volunteers. <laughs> no, gra no, you're grabbing the handle. Grab next to the handle. No. Here and here. Here and here. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. It's not too bad. It's not too heavy. It's like I've got it on. I said pull it out. Place it. Pull 
place it. Okay, is it in? It goes, yeah. Did you check it? Pull on it. Okay, congratulations, you're a KC-97 boom operator. <laughs> and when you fly the airlines, you can tell them you know how to do a hatch. All right. And so these are the tank fuel tanks here? Right, and when I was flying, if the tanks were full, we weren't allowed to smoke. But after refueling, we could smoke, which is backwards. Yeah. So uh, I was engaged, and my fiance told me that she wasn't kissing me anymore because it was like an ashtray. So I quit smoking so I could fly on an airplane and kiss my fiance. Uh, 57 years ago. <laughs> we had a cargo hoist. And here's a... Oh, you do. There's a rail running right down the center. Yeah. And here's here's the controller. There's the rail. And here's the controller. And we have different ports we could plug it in, up and down the compartment. Right. So the, the 135 doesn't have uh, cargo hoist. I used to hook my pilot up and run him up and down. It. They tell me they don't do stuff like that in the Air Force anymore. Thank you very much. Okay. I very much appreciate the tour. Oh no, I love it. So, do you, you know, get do you get out here like once a week or uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays? Okay. Yeah. So. So come to the C-47 March Field Museum. KC-97. Okay. Right. KC-97. Uh, <laughs> thank uh, you. I'll give you a tour. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay.